Izuzetna mi je čast što danas na ovome webinaru mogu gostiti profesora doktora Kevina Changa, liječnika sa Tajvana koji je izuzetno doprinio promociji ultrazvuka kao takvoga. Ima jako puno publiciranih članaka, preko 400 i nešto u vrlo kratkom periodu, u stvari nekoliko des, u zadnjih deseta godina, koje su prvenstveno vezane za ultrazvučnu dijagnostiku, puno publiciranih članaka upravo i o Karpalnom kanalu, pa slobodno potražite na PubMedu. Isto tako, dr. Kevin Chang, profesor Chang, jako puno radi infiltracije na području neuroloških struktura i ne samo klasične militracije, nego i ove nove metode kao što su hidrodisekcija, pa mi je velika čast da s njim mogu o tome popričati i približiti vam u stvari jednog takvog stručnjaka i ono što danas radimo, što možemo raditi za poboljšanje Karpanog kanala. Ok, Kevin, so yeah. thank you for joining me in this webinar. Yeah. Right now we are in... Yes, right now we are in Taiwan, in Taipei, yeah. on the 13th ultrasound Uh, workshop yeah. organized by you and the Ultrason Society of the Taiwan, which is actually a wonderful place to be if you want to learn something. It's my, also my pleasure to have you in my course. Yes, thank you so much. I'm very happy to be here. Uh, okay, well, to, today we are talking about uh, the carpal tumor syndrome, yeah, and uh, I know that you are very experienced in the carpal tumor in this region also. So I would like to ask you a few questions about the injections and no about. Yeah. Okay, so uh, uh, how often do you inject? The you mean how often? Yes. Uh, okay, so it depends on my patient. Of course, uh, most of my patients have a muscular skeletal problem. I count it's around uh, five to ten percent of patients have uh, nerve entrapment syndrome, and the most common nerve entrapment syndrome, as you know, uh, is the carpal tunnel syndrome. So, I, uh, in my clinical practice, uh, if uh, the patient come to me, I'm going to evaluate their symptom first. If uh, their symptom is mild, um, you know, either validated by their symptom or validated by the uh, electro electrodiagnosis, I'm going to give them rehab first. But if uh, their symptom does not respond to the conservative treatment well, I'm going to suggest them to receive injection. Okay, and uh, what do we inject in the carpal tunnel syndrome? Uh, okay, actually, uh, if you uh, look at my publication, you are going to know there are re many regimens that we can choose for injecting carpal tunnel, uh, including uh, steroids, Uh, Fabricant dextrose, uh, a PRP, and uh, you know in some uh, paper you are going to they are going to describe a uh, uh, hyaluronic acid is also useful, and also um, vitamin B12. So uh, for me, um, I use usually use uh, the following regimen uh, like uh, corticosteroids, fabricant uh, dextrose, and the PRP because they are ready uh, ready available in Taiwan. Most recently, we had the uh, techniques called hydrodissection that yeah. uh, that is used. This is something that a lot of people are talking about, yeah. about the hydrodissection. Do you perform the hydrodissection, and what do you think the difference is between the classical steroid injections and the hydrodissection? Oh, okay. I think it's a very good question because, uh, as you know, hydrodissection technique has been developed uh, in the recent uh, uh, decades. And the, the reason why they think hydrodissection is important for nerve entrapment is uh, they usually use uh, Caputano syndrome as the model. So for Caputano syndrome, there is a theory uh, is, uh, you know, the patient, the reason why the patient develop Caputano syndrome is due to the fibrosis of the synovian connective tissue. So uh, the reason why hydrodissection is useful is because they are, it's going to relieve the fibrosis. So uh, what is the difference between a hydrodissection uh, uh, and uh, uh, other uh, injection technique? First, regarding injection technique, we have to divide them into the ultrasound guidance and the one without ultrasound guidance. Of, of course, nowadays, Uh, we use ultrasound guidance. So uh, now if you use a steroid for injection or carpal syndrome, actually according to our study, uh, you know, uh, if you are not experienced uh, in hydrodissection, um, 
using steroid only to do the pure neural injection has a similar effect of hydrodization. Because the, the main reason is uh, the corticosteroid is a potent medication. So if we can distribute the medication around the nerve, uh, you don't have to uh, spend lots of effort in doing hydrodissection. But today, if you select the regimen like 5-10 dextrose, uh, you need to use hydrodissection because 5-10 uh, dextrose, although it's proven to be effective, but uh, its potency is not as strong as steroid. So that's why you have to carefully relieve the fibrosis at the under surface and the upper surface of the median nerve to relieve the symptom. Great. Okay. So uh, you said that ultrasound guided injections are very important. Um, how much? Do, how, do, how, what do you think about the um, uh, ultrasound approaches of the carpal tunnel syndrome? Do we have enough educations about uh, infiltrations around the world? Uh, actually, I have to say, um, if you want to perform hydrodissection, um, you know, for median nerve, uh, you have you need lots of practice uh, because there are many uh, aspects that, that you have to consider. And then, you know, the most that come approach uh, describing uh, in the papers, in the books is the honor approach. The reason why they choose honor approach is, uh, you know, if you inject from the honor side, uh, you are going to avoid the, the big tendon, which is the phrase uh, carpi radialis. So that's why I think uh, this technique is first uh, described in 2015 in, uh, I think it's in, in the group of uh, Professor Jess Smith in the United States. And, uh, um, but if you want to perform the injection from the honor, honor side, the uh, concern is uh, you need to make sure your needle not to damage the honor nerve and the honor artery. So that's why first uh, you have to choose the appropriate transducer. For me, I like to use uh, the uh, hockey stick transducer. And then another thing is uh, just like what I mentioned, if you want to do the hydrodissection, you have to hydrodissect the under surface and other upper surface of uh, uh, the nerve. So that's why you need to have a uh, space. I mean, uh, enough space, space for you to manu manipulate your needle. So for example, uh, I, I, I know uh, some of our colleagues, when they perform the hydrodissection for the median nerve, uh, they do not put a pillow, a big pillow underneath the wrist. So how does it cause the difficulty during injection? Of course, when you do the injection, usually the needle goes to the under surface of the median nerve. But once you withdraw, you want to hydrodissect the upper surface, you do not have a space, you know, um, at the uh, dorsal aspect of the wrist. So that's why after that, I know it's very important to have a pillow uh, uh, underneath uh, your wrist, and then it's easy for you uh, to manipulate or adjust your middle angle during the hydrodissection. Okay, thank you, thank you, Kevin, for this interview and for um, being on my webinar. And uh, I'm very happy to be here in Taiwan with you and on this course. And we also invite everyone to come to Taiwan to the neuromuscular ultrasound training, but also to the musculoskeletal ultrasound, ultrasound workshops that we that you perform here. Yeah, it's indeed my great honor. Again, I like. You know, uh, you, uh, uh, you know uh, your attendance uh, to my course, it really uh, furnish my course and uh, I hope you can learn a lot uh, or also uh, learn a lot uh, from uh, our course and uh, of course, uh, you know, enjoy Taiwan. Thank you. Thank you so much.